If you ask any high ELO writer, pro, or video maker whether ELO hell exists or not, they all give you the same answer. No. Yet despite this, there's still a large chunk of the community that believes in it. In every one of my more popular videos, I've gotten plenty of comments saying goofy things like, too bad league ain't a 1v1 game, or it doesn't matter if your teammates suck, or something along those lines. Even players who don't outwardly say ELO hell exists often play as if they believe in it, and get stuck in lower ELOs because of it. So why are there so many people stuck in low ELO? Well, I can tell you it's not because of your teammates. The classic excuse is, it doesn't matter how well I do, if I go 10-1 and 1, but my team sucks, I'll still lose. Well, it turns out that's not actually true. Take a look at this graph from ELO Buff. It shows my KD ratio and champion for every game of League of Legends I've ever played. Each dot represents a game. Green is a win, red is a loss. The fact of the matter is, when you go positive, you win. If you go negative, you lose. And yes, this graph does account for assists. Obviously, you don't win every single game you go positive, and you don't lose every single game you go negative. But clearly, there's a line that decides whether you win or lose about 90% of the time. If you do well enough, then you're going to win. Now is when some really smart people come out and say something like, you have a valid point. However, what about the fact that the ELO rating system was developed for two-player games such as chess? Which is a very good point. The ELO rating system was developed by a man named Arpad ELO, a professor of physics at Marquette University. He was a chess master who wanted to improve on the current chess rating system known as the Harkness rating system. And in 1970, the ELO rating system replaced it completely, and it's been used ever since. The problem for those who think that is the ELO rating system has already been adapted for multi player sports such as association football, American college football, basketball, major league baseball, and of course plenty of video games like League of Legends. By altering the formulas used in a way to act as if each team is an individual player, you can make the ELO rating system work quite well for team games. Even if you're at an ELO where every single game there's a troll, lever, or AFK who loses the game single-handedly like so many claim, if anything that should make it easier for you to climb out. You'll get more free wins than you do losses. Statistically speaking, assuming you're not the reason for the loss, this troll has a 56% chance of being put on the enemy team, and only a 44% chance of being put on your team. If you're stuck in this supposed ELO, then you should win 56% of your games no matter what. Also, other than obvious examples like pros never getting stuck in ELO hell, what about ELO boosters? There's a large group of people who exploit those that believe in ELO hell. They make a fair bit of money from it. If you really can't do anything to win any games because your team always sucks, why are there hundreds of people who will carry you out of your ELO for 50 bucks? But despite all this, I will admit there are plenty of instances where ELO hell looks real. There are people on my friends list, people I know in real life, who have played for years without gaining much ELO. So why is this? Why are there people who have played over a thousand ranked games without gaining more than a hundred ELO? Why are there people stuck in what they claim to be ELO hell? Well, the answer is simple. They aren't playing to get better. You can play this game for 25 years, but if you aren't playing to get better, then you won't. Even Scar remarked when talking about his past Dota experience, I don't like it when people say they have Dota experience. I never had a good grasp of Dota until probably the last two months that I played it. I played it for five years, and only in the last two months was I able to say, I suck, I need to get better here, here, and here, and I was a much better player because of it. The same goes for every competitive game. In Day 9's 100th Daily, he talked about meeting Froz, and Froz's attitude when it came to playing StarCraft. Froz would look at other players and say, gosh, he sucks, I can do that, but the difference came in when he went into a game and lost. When he lost, he didn't blame anyone but himself. He stood back and said, wow, I suck, I need to get better. This is the professional attitude a player needs if he wants to get higher ELO. Whether it's your third game you've ever played, or you're a pro headed off to IPL5. If you play as if you are better, then you won't get better. Sometimes that's just fine. If you're the best team in the world, you don't need to get better, but the majority of us aren't. Keep in mind, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone. That means you too. Your team will make mistakes, but so will you. You're at the same ELO they are. You'll make just as many mistakes as they do. Recognizing this is the only way you can climb out of what you call ELO hell. Thank you very much for watching. If you're interested on more on how to become a better player, I suggest you subscribe. Good luck to everyone in solo queue, and have a wonderful day.